Hello, I'm from Mega and I'd like to introduce you to the TVR 1000 Stroke 3. Handheld, portable, time domain reflectometer with a number of unique features. It has already built in a filter for power use. It has a crystal clear backlit display, four times more resolution than a standard for this type of product. It has a very short pulse, uh, two nanoseconds, to give you the ability to see those close-in faults. It's sealed to IP54. It has an auto feature. It has manual settings built in. It has dual cursors. It has a very simple four-way switch for operation. And it's ideal for those simple jobs that you need to find a fault quickly. The automatic feature on the TDL 1000 Stroke 3 has a number of features. Firstly, we automatically set the impedance on the cable as long as the cable is more than a few meters long. In this case, you don't need to read the specification on the product. You do need to know the velocity factor. Auto also sets up the pulse width to give you the ideal for the range that you're selected to. The third thing that you need on a TDR typically is gain. And auto, yes, sets up the gain for you on this also. So the auto setting on the TDR 1000 Stroke 3 is a simple one selection for those of us who don't do TDR measurements all day long. The auto feature enables us to connect and to detect a cable automatically. Just see on the display here. As I connect the cable, you'll see the impedance change to match the cable and the test. We now need to choose the range of the cable that we're testing. So a simple up selection of the four-way switch changes the range. And here, we'll see we're on the 100 meter range. And if I adjust the cursor, you'll see here is my open. Cursor 1 is positioned around about 2 meters. Cursor 2 is positioned at 71.8 meters. And the screen very helpfully tells me the delta, the difference between the two, which in this case is 69.9 meters. The manual settings on the TDR uh, are twofold. They are designated as two and one. And these positions give you the same sort of operation. The difference is that in position one, you're operating cursor one on the display. And in position two, you're operating cursor two on the display. Uh, these positions take what you have set yourself uh, in the setup, which we'll go into in a second, um, rather than the automatic features that the instrument would choose for you. In manual mode, I have more control over the operation of the instrument. In position two, I can adjust cursor two on the display. In position one, I can adjust cursor one on the display. And if we show a short circuit, you'll see that the trace is showing me we have a very close fault, a very close uh, problem with the cable. I'll range the instrument down to 10 meters in this case. By adjusting cursor 2 now, right the way through, and you'll see the speed up of the operation of the cursor. there's the position of my fault. I can prove that by taking the short off. And you'll see there is the position.
I'd like to give you a, a glimpse of the hold feature that you'll find quite useful using this particular product. Here we can see the open circuit at 2.28 meters. I can actually use the hold feature in this particular case. So if we now create a short, you can see the difference between the lighter gray trace, which is the held trace, and the live overlay, which gives us a pinpointing position to adjust our cursor on the display and find the fault. The TDL1000 can give you the benefit of seeing many different types of faults. Each of these faults has its own unique signature, uh, the picture on the display. I'd like to share with you a few of those different uh, types of faults now so that you can look and try and identify them for yourself. Here is what you'll see as an open circuit. Note the rising uh, TDR trace. Here is a short circuit. Here is a splice. And here are some of the other faults that you may find and the signatures that uh, may give you help in identifying those particular faults. Now the setup feature. On the setup position, you have access to the menu. The menu allows you to adjust the velocity factor, depending on the cable that you're using. It allows you to adjust the gain, and it allows you to adjust the pulse width, depending on the range that you're on. It also has features for adjusting the contrast on the display and muting the sounder, uh, if you wish. The setup position. Here you'll notice the top line of the display now highlights, in this case, VF, velocity factor. You notice the up and down arrows where I can adjust the setting of velocity factor. And this is adjustable between 0.2 and 0.99. Using the left-right arrows, I can go through the setups I can go through the set of parameters. This is my pulse width. And if I'm operating in manual mode, I can choose a pulse width that's relevant for the range that I'm on. Here, I can manually adjust the impedance of the cable. Here, I can adjust the contrast on the display. This allows me to mute the sounder. I can switch between meters and feet, and I can adjust the gain, again changing the response on the display. 